make sure that we're not we're not going too far. I know sometimes it's hard, but we got to be sensitive because we're not out of this yet. Amen. Proverbs chapter four. Verses one to nine. This year, 2022. Will be the year of wisdom and revelation for this church. The Spirit of God has been dealing with me about this. It is something that is so important for all of us and something that God is trying to forge within the character, in the life, in the nature of a local church. And we have to understand that as the world begins to get darker, which it will get darker, there is a level of wisdom and revelation that God wants to release over us so that as we're navigating through dark times, we have clarity of vision. And so what the Spirit of God is saying to us and has been dealing with me about is making sure that we, that we revisit this and this will be the theme for the year. That God wants to give us wisdom. He wants to give us revelation. And we have to understand that wisdom and revelation is not something that, that we can just find in a book. It's not something that we can just find on YouTube. It is not something that we can just find um, listening to our favorite preachers. The true wisdom comes from above. It comes from the Spirit of God, and it's what He wants to pour out upon all of us so that we have great understanding going forward in this life, and not just for this year, but understand God is wants to pour out His wisdom and revelation for us in this year as we go forward. Because saints, believe me, we're going to need it. We're going to need it. Listen to what it says here in verse 1. It says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me. This is Solomon. He's talking about his father, David. And he said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Then he says this with an exclamation point. He says, get wisdom. Minister Antonio, I, I want shirts next year that say, get wisdom. Get wisdom. He says, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. He says, do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Wisdom will preserve you. He says, not only will wisdom um, preserve you, he says, love her, and she will keep you. Now watch this, saints. He says in verse 7, wisdom is the principal theme. Just underline that. Wisdom is the principal theme. He says, therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, he says, get understanding. He says, exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place your head, place on your head an ornament of grace. An ornament of grace. A crown of glory, it says, she will deliver to you. This is amazing to me. You know, I had, obviously, I've read the book of Proverbs so many times, but this just jumped off the page this last month. As I consider the fact that God is saying for us, in verse 5, he says, get wisdom. We need to understand how to rightly apply the knowledge that we receive as we go through this life. Whether it is through the scriptures, whether it is through just learning through our day-to-day -day lives, whether it is in school, it is a matter of us knowing how to rightly apply our knowledge and God being able to access the knowledge that you have and then rightly use that in circumstances and situations so that you make decisions that promote his kingdom and then bring blessing to your life. So he says, get wisdom. So many people have failed because of a lack of wisdom. 
So many people have not journeyed through this life and had a smooth or a, a straight path because they lacked wisdom. The decisions that we make oftentimes are the things that cripples us along the way. And it's a lot of times it's because we're not accessing the wisdom of God. But David understood this. This is how he beat Goliath. This is how he, he beat the lion. This is how he was always one that before he made decisions, he inquired of the Lord. He didn't assume that he knew. He didn't pretend that he had it all figured out. He didn't make it seem as though he had his own way and he knew what to do. He was constantly asking God, should I do this? Should we go after them and will we overtake them? Shall we recover all? This was his perspective. It was a matter of wisdom. And then he, he was willing to have people around him who had wisdom that he was able to access counsel from so that he can continue to journey through life and make wise decisions according to God's will for his life. We know David, he fell. We know he had issues. We know he, he made some bad decisions. But by and large, when you read this holy canon, God gives you a glimpse of what it looks like to access divine wisdom and then have continued success if you stay in tune with God. And so we see here very clearly through scripture, Solomon is tapped into something that his father was able to pass down to him. Wisdom should be passed down. Whew. Wisdom should be, it should be, it should be given out. It should be deposited to the next generation if the next generation has wisdom they will access the wisdom that the generation before had when you see the hand of god and you see see the success of god wisdom it, it, you don't have to you know reinvent the wheel if you see wisdom in on display and the power of wisdom going forth then you're willing because of wisdom to access it and this is what solomon is doing my father is wise he taught me he showed me how to access wisdom and the value now watch this and the value and the beauty of wisdom verse 7 look what it says it says wisdom is the principal thing a noun meaning the beginning the first write it down y'all the chief, the best. He said, wisdom is the beginning, the first, the chief, the best. The first fruits occurring 51 times in the Old Testament. Now, this next point just blew my mind because I had never read this before, never knew this before. This term holds the honor of being the first word written in the entire Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, in the, it, this was the principle. This was the first. This is the chief. It is the best. In the beginning, God created. When he says in the beginning, it was the first word. The principal thing was. And so this word wisdom is tied to the very beginning of creation. But it's something that we don't really, and especially in church, you don't hear the word wisdom talked about a lot. But true apostolic grace always accesses wisdom because you need wisdom if you're going to build something that stands the test of time and that achieves God's purpose and goal so you hear Apostle Paul and we're going to see this Apostle Paul and you see individuals like Peter talking about wisdom because it was the thing that was different you hear someone like Solomon talking about this why because it's, it's, it's so necessary but it's often so forgotten we talk so much about knowledge we don't talk enough about wisdom but this year God is emphasizing this as we go forward he wants to pour forth and give forth his wisdom to us and revelation to us so that we have great understanding and we're able to navigate through this life and have great success. Can I have an amen? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13, 
on down to 18. I want you to see this. The Bible tells us to exalt wisdom and promote it and honor. But one of the things is, is how do we really value it? How do we value wisdom? It says it here in verse 18. In talking about wisdom, it says in verse, let's look at verse 13. 13. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. And the man who gains understanding. It says, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her grain than fine gold. Value. How do you value wisdom? It's better than silver, y'all. It's way better than gold. But in this culture and in this world, the devil is very crafty. He gets us to devalue things that need real value. And the things that, that aren't very valued, because you know, stuff tarnishes, y'all. It just gets old, and then next you know, it just sits in your, it just sits in your jewelry box. But it does help you along the road to make wise decisions so that you stay in tune with God and you follow the finger of God and can accomplish the things of God. And we put so much value on something like our silver and gold, but when it comes to William I, of wisdom, I, well, you know, whatever, you know. We don't think about it enough, but how many know we're going to think about it more in 2022? And so look what he says here. He says here, he says in verse 15, she is more precious than rubies. And all the things that you may desire cannot compare with her. He's personifying wisdom. The ultimate expression of the personification of wisdom is we know is found in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have to see that what he's doing is he's helping us to see that, that, that wisdom is valuable. He says, cannot come. He says, length of days is in her right hand. So if you want to live a longer life, we have to access the wisdom that comes from God. He says, in her left hand, he says, riches and honor. If you want to come into uh, more of a prosper, prosperous life financially, he's saying that wisdom is what you need. He says her ways are ways of pleasantness. And all her paths are peace. If we want to have peace in our life, we need wisdom and revelation. We need wisdom that comes from God. Then he goes down here in verse 18. He says, she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. Now, I want to I wanna access wisdom, but I want to retain wisdom. Mm. I want to make sure that I'm retaining wisdom. I'm, I'm accessing wisdom. Then I, I have wisdom. Now I want to retain wisdom. This is going to help me to walk through life. I want to rightly apply the knowledge that I've received and make decisions under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, decisions that are, that, are, that are reflection of the wisdom that God has given me. This is what we need. God wants us to have wisdom. He wants to, us to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. He wants us to navigate through this life with the wisdom that comes from him. And so now, when it comes to your decision-making process, you're not just winging it through life. You're not just flying by the seat of your pants. That there's an invisible hand that is ordering your steps and giving you the wisdom that you need to make sure that you stay right in tune with the will of God for your life. Can I have an amen, y'all? And this is what something, this is something that God is, he's trying to release. And we're going to see God's going to release this upon us as we go forth. The world is becoming so dark and there is a voice that is speaking that is posing as wisdom, but it is not the wisdom of God. Now watch this. Let's talk about what wisdom is not. Let's go to James chapter 3. James chapter 3.
And we're going to look at verses 13 on down to 18. Now look at this, y'all. Verse 13 on down to 18. James chapter 3. Who is wise and understanding among you? It says, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness. Somebody say meekness. In the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom, somebody say this wisdom. So this tells me there's another kind of wisdom. This is where we have the issue because sometimes we get so busy listening to the talking heads on TV and in society and in, you know, and various spheres of government and whatnot. We, we're so busy, so consumed. But I have to say this, y'all. The Spirit of God was, was just dealing with me yesterday about this. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I was just meditating on that. I was just thinking about that. He who has an ear to hear. So at the end of this age, and as we're approaching the end of the age, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, as God is speaking to, as the Lord Jesus is speaking to the churches, he says, he who has an ear, let him hear. So I'm saying to myself, I was like, ah, so the problem at the end of the age is going to be a hearing problem. It's going to be a hearing problem. The problem is going to be a hearing problem. There's going to be so many voices pumping information, but who's able to hear the voice of their shepherd? Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They're able to hear right. They're able to hear right. I said, he who has an ear to hear, that's, well, that's the issue here. People are letting everybody just speak into their life. And there is something that appears to be wisdom that is not wisdom that is coming from a book. Can I have an amen, y'all? I'm about to preach. You know, I've been on vacation for the last five weeks. I'm ready to throw down. So, so what happens is, so what happens is we, we, we have taken and we have looked at the wisdom of God and we just think everything is wisdom, but we have to have good ears. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear with the Spirit of God. We got to be, I got to get my hearing right. He says this wisdom, which is a different kind of wisdom, y'all. He says does not descend from above. He says, but is number one, earthly. Number two, he says it's sensual. That means it is soulish. It is not born of the spirit. It is something that's born out of people's emotions and, and their, their lower nature. He says sensual, and then he says it's just demonic. So the devil, he comes along with a wisdom that is not, a, it appears and poses as wisdom, but it is, it is demonic, it is earthly, and it is sensual. But do we have ears to hear? Like, no, that's not the wisdom of God. I want to hear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. That's not the wisdom of God. That is earthly, that is sensual or soulish, and that is demonic. That's the devil. And understand the devil doesn't walk around, saints, with a pitchfork and horns on his head saying, Rah, I'm the devil, I'm going to get you. The devil, he'll, he'll, he'll pull up on you in a three-piece suit driving a Bentley. Can I have an amen, y'all? The devil will pull up looking real cute. The devil doesn't, and that's the problem. But we have to see that 
that the wisdom that is from above is different. Look what it says here. He says, but the wisdom that is from above, verse 17, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits. Now watch this, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. This is what the Bible says. So this is the wisdom. This is what we need. We see what it is not. We see what it is not. Then he begins to show us what it is. He says, number one, that it's the meekness of wisdom. So there's a meekness of wisdom that, that we should all be looking for when it comes to analyzing something that is, that is true we, meekness and is true wisdom. It's important that we see that when wisdom comes along, it's not showboaty, proud, arrogant. In some ways, it's kind of matter of fact. It doesn't come off as something, you know, do you understand? I'm always the smartest person in the room. <laughs> when you start hearing stuff like that, when you start talking about, or you get around people and they try to show off their knowledge, just shut up. Can I have an amen? It's like, could you just shut up? Nobody's impressed with what you know. There's a meekness of wisdom that we all have to see, and this is what God's trying to pass out. It is not something different than that. And I say this because as God is releasing wisdom in Revelation, if it is puffing, if it should not puff you up, it should make us more humble. Knowing that we have no victory without God giving us direction and insight on what we should do and how we should do it. Just like God did for David and then David began to show the value of wisdom to his son. So it's important that we have the meekness of wisdom. And then he says not only that, but as we skip down, he says in verse 17, but this wisdom that is from above is first, he says, pure. There's a purity about the wisdom. When God begins to release his wisdom, there is no manipulation involved. There's no manipulation. There's no trickery involved. True wisdom is, it has, if it comes from God, it's pure. There's a purity about it. There's no trickery in it. Now watch this, y'all. There's no self-serving in it. And this is one of the problems that you see, that, that people aren't able to hear this, the real wisdom and use it as a buffer against the wisdom that is self-serving, that is trying to come. Because it's a wisdom, they're able to sense the purity. There's a purity of wisdom about what this person is saying. It's not, there's no pretense to it. There's no cover. up. They're not do, saying this. And so it's important that we, we grasp this about what God is, wants to pour out upon us as we go forth into 2022. He says here, then he says, this wisdom is then peaceable. If you're always fighting with people, you got a problem. It stops, and this is what happened. True wisdom that comes from God is peaceable. There's a, there's a peace that comes with it, and it's something that we should be looking for. It brings forth peace in our lives. Doesn't mean that there won't be moments where you have to navigate into that place, place of peace, but it is peaceable. If we're always confronting and fighting and fighting, and everything is a fight, a fight, a fight, a fight, at some point in time, you, it's not everybody else. Can I have an amen, y'all? The wisdom that comes from God is peaceable. It brings forth a peace. And there's a calmness and a settling that comes with that wisdom that comes from above. He says, not only peaceable, he says, but gentle. If you're having to force your way through, true wisdom is there's a gentleness about it that also, but that also leads to progress. 
that also leads to progress. You can nudge someone in the right direction and it leads to progress. And so we have to be willing to see that this is the wisdom that God brings. He says, willing to yield. When true wisdom comes along and we grasp true wisdom, it'll help us to stop being driven and we learn how to be, to, to be led. And then there's a yieldedness that comes upon us when we're, when we're being led. I was reading this thing and I was just sharing this with a pastor. And I, I still just in my mind, it just blesses me. Stephen Curry is like the best shooter in the history of shooting. And he said, and I saved this in my pictures. He, I saw a quote from him. He said, if I'm doing something wrong, he said, I want my coach to show me that I'm doing something wrong so I can get it right. I said, man, that thing hit me so it just blessed me. That's a yielded spirit. That's a yielded spirit. Wisdom, when, and that's wisdom. I'm not doing, if I'm not, if I'm, if something's going wrong with my jump shot, if something's going wrong with the way I'm playing defense, just show me what I'm doing. What am I doing? Oh, you're doing that wrong? Oh, you're okay, okay, okay. I got you, I got you. But some people get so lifted up to pride that nobody can tell them nothing. And that's not the wisdom that comes from above. He says here, he says, willing to yield, he says, full of mercy. Full of mercy. True wisdom, it brings forth a mercy, and it, and it helps us to understand the value of mercy in a person's life. He says, not only mercy, he says, good fruits. If you are a person that is full of the wisdom of God, there's going to be some evidence of that wisdom. And it's going to be good fruit. You're going to see the good fruit. What does the trail behind you look like? And not only that, but he says, he says, good fruit, he says, without partiality. This is where a lot of people fail. They have partiality in their hearts. You and I cannot be great judges with wisdom as we're living in this world if we have partiality partiality will blind you i have a wife i have four kids in this church and they know how much i love them but when it comes to the standard of god or what god says in his word they know i don't have any partiality if something is wrong it's wrong i don't care if it's my 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 wife my kids my uncle my cousin my grandma whoever it is if something is wrong, it's wrong, and I can't make it right. I can't make it right when God has already written it in his book that is wrong. And if I have partiality in my heart towards a person, meaning I have a different standard for you than I do for you. The Bible says if I do that, that I'm committing sin. And in fact, it's not wise for me to do that. I'm not helping the person. I'm actually hurting that person. Can I preach it tonight? And what happens is true wisdom, it, it causes you to be able to see. It removes the barrier of partiality. So now, that when, no, it, so now your thought concerning anything, no matter who it is, is that what's God's opinion on this? Not that's my mama, you know, I, 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 can, I got, but you know, your mama, she got, you know, you know she messing up too. Yeah, I know she's messing up, you know, but I'm not going to say nothing. I, I, I can't talk to nobody. I can't do nothing. I can't. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't care who it is. I don't care. I don't care who it is. What does God say in his word? Wisdom removes the scales. Wisdom causes you to see clearly. Wisdom opens your, whoo, I just feel that right now in the spirit. Wisdom causes you to see, and it gives you vision, and it takes away the, the, uh, the impairment of, of partiality. So it doesn't matter. I don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat. If something's not right in the sight of God, I don't care who it is. This isn't right. 
I don't care if you're black or white or Chinese or Japanese or Hispanic. I don't care. I don't, I'm not colorblind either. I mean, I, I, it, it doesn't matter. If something is wrong, then it's wrong. I don't have any partiality. But that's the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God causes you to see clearly. It causes you to see. And what we want to do is make sure that we access this because God, he removes the partiality. And then he says, without hypocrisy. The true wisdom that God gives, he, it, he removes the partiality, the hypocrisy. So that we're not, no longer play acting. That it's not just external, but it's also internal. So that the outside and the inside are working together to achieve God's will. And the wisdom of God now is truly flowing. There's no hypocrisy there. This is what God's trying to do. But it takes the wisdom of God. It takes the revelation of God to get us to this place. And this is where God is trying to take us. But how does this happen? How does this happen, saints? Go to Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to close it out with this. And we will be discussing this very heavily the first quarter of next year. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. The apostle Paul was such a man of wisdom. He accessed the wisdom that came from God. You know, the scripture says that the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need the fear of the Lord back in the church. That's when we're going to access wisdom. We access wisdom by developing a healthy fear of the Lord. But realize that in, in developing the fear of the Lord, it, it, it welcomes the Lord. And then he begins to pour out. And Paul understood this. So he says this in verse 15 of Ephesians chapter 1. He says, therefore also... After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. He says, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills, he says, all in all. Now, this is interesting because Paul says these people, obviously, they were believers. They already had the Holy Spirit. Now he says, I want to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I want the release and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in wisdom and revelation. I want that to be manifested towards you. He says the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And this is something that is so important. Because now we see that true wisdom that comes from above is poured out by the Holy Spirit, is poured out upon us, and it, it comes upon us. That it takes up residence within us so that now we're able to access the mind of God and God is able to give us wisdom if we're willing to develop the fear of the Lord and stop before we just make decisions. Say, what does God say? What should I do right here? I need the wisdom of God. I can't just make a decision. But they're going to pay you this much money. I don't care about the money. I care about being in the center of God's will. 
You can buy a big house. I don't care about the house. I care about being in a, you can be in a big house and have a miserable life, y'all. I want to make sure God is going to be right there in the house. I don't care about that. I want to make sure God is in the house. Well, don't you like her? She fine, man. You need to go ahead and pop the question. I don't know yet. God hasn't spoke to me yet. I got to hear from God, man. I don't be playing around. Man, he's cute. Don't you see? He got a Bentley, girl. You better go ahead. I don't care about what he got. All I know is I know he better be filled with the Holy Ghost, and it better be God that's telling me to marry that man because I don't got time to be mad. Can I have an amen, y'all? I ain't got time to be playing no games. My life is already, I'm already getting up in age. I ain't got time to be playing no games. <laughs> I need the wisdom of God. I need to be around some people that got wisdom. I need to get around some people that have wisdom. I don't want to just have some friends. I want to have some people that got some wisdom. We cool and everything, but, but I know who to go to. I need, to get to, I, know the, I need some people with some wisdom around me. How are we going to accomplish the, win of the, 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 the will of God when the wisdom that pe people are giving us is earthly, sensual, and demonic? I want to get around some people that got the wisdom of God and that have the characteristics of the wisdom that comes from God. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing when you sit here and Paul says, my prayer is, is that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But now watch this, y'all, because this wisdom that I need isn't just so I can get stuff and make it through life and have, you know, you, it, it's not just for that. God will, we saw that there, the value of wisdom, it brings prosperity, blessing, all these other things. But there's something greater that he's trying to get us to access. He says that the God, verse 17, of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now look at this, y'all, in the knowledge of him. That's number one. Wisdom and revelations helps you to gain more knowledge of him. Helps you to grow in your intimacy with God and your revelation concerning who he is. He says not only that, but look at verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being what? Enlightened. So now God begins to enlighten the eyes of my understanding. Now things aren't always hard. So I'm getting a greater knowledge of who God is. Then he begins to enlighten me so that I can see all things well. I can see things in the natural, but then I also can perceive and understand and see things in the spirit. That now understanding begins to come. Oh, so that's what you were doing, Lord. That's why that, okay, I can see it. I can see it. That's why you, oh, that's why you shut that door. You did not want me to get that job. I wanted that job so bad. Now the company doesn't even exist. You're just so wise, God. Thank you. You saw what I didn't see. Can I have an amen? So this is why you didn't want me to buy that house. They tried to hide that the foundation was towed up from the flow up, and it's sinking. Thank you, God, for your wisdom. Can I have an amen, y'all? What happens is God begins to give us wisdom, and he helps us to navigate through life. And then he enlightens us, and our eyes of our understanding begin to be illuminated. He says not only that. He says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, now watch this, that you might know. So not only just for natural things, but also that I might know what is the hope of his calling. There's a hope that is tied to the calling of God for every human being. God enlightens me opens up my understanding that I might know what is the hope of my calling. 
Not only what God is going to do through me, but also the fact that, that he has stuff in store for me. Is heaven become real to you? That's part of the hope of your calling. Has Jesus become, has Jesus become real to you? That's part of the hope of your, he's enlightening you that you might know what is the hope of your calling. Do you understand really that you're just passing through this world? That this is not your home? Has it become real to you and clear to you that, that, that if you die, you're going right into the presence of God? So what shall I fear? Is there something, is there, see, there's something that begins to sh shift in your head and in your heart when you know is the, what is the hope of your calling. And what happens is it's the spirit of wisdom and revelation that brings you and I to this place in our lives. That you might know what is the hope of his calling. Now watch this. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Do you know that there's an inheritance that God has in store for you? That you might know what is the riches of his inheritance in the saints. That, man, my father owns everything, man. My father is the king of the universe. Can I have an amen? That my God, that my God, that he, that Jesus died on my behalf because God, my father, was looking for me. When he died, he was, he was thinking about me. Do you know that? That my father owns all the cattle on, can I have an amen? Your father owns all the cattle on a thousand hills? That everything belongs to him? That God, if he takes care of a sparrow, that, that our God, his inheritance in me says that he's going to take care of me too? How much more so will he take care of me? That, that listen, is your inheritance that we might know what is the riches of its inheritance? With it, that man, you know what? I'm broke, but I'm not broke. What you mean by that? That everything I need, my God supplies. <laughs> everything I need, not everything I want. He gave me some of my wants, but not all of them. Everything I need, my God supplies. Like, how did you just do that? How did you just, God just opened the door. Man, how are you? I thought that you was going to quit a long time. Why? Why should I? The God of the universe. It's my father. Do, you, do we need to start talking like that more? Where, or when you're on the job and people threatening you and saying they're going to do this and do that. You say, well, you try to do what you want to do. But my God, man, my God is on my side, man. <laughs> God is on my side, man. What you going to do, man? <laughs> But look what he says. If we know what there's a riches and inheritance in the saints. Look at verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? Do you understand the power that it took for you and I to get to where we're at? And the fact that this power is continually extended towards us at all times. Well, it's the spirit of wisdom and revelation that helps us to arrive at that place where we understand the, the power that is, that God is powerful. And this power has been extended towards me. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly in, in the heavenly places. And then he said he's far above all principalities and power. Stop being afraid of the devil and use the wisdom that God has given you. To navigate through this life and to make decisions that God has ordained for your life. And then the spirit of wisdom and revelation is available for you so that you can do that. But what happens here is that we start, um, that we don't realize that every dominion, every power. He says every single might. He says there's only there's one name that is above every name. 
He says, not only in this age, but also in the age which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. The church does not belong to me. It does not belong to you. The church belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died, who who was buried, he he rose from the grave and is now sitting on the right hand of the Father. The church does not belong to us. The church belongs to him. We are his bride. We are his body. We are his hands, and we are his feet, and he wants to feel all in all, and that's what God wants to do, but he doesn't want to have a, have a, a bride that is without wisdom or a bride that has the wisdom from the world that is earthly and sensual and demonic. He wants a bride that is filled with his spirit and has accessed the wisdom of God and has accessed the mind of God. This is what God is trying to do. But we have to make sure that we take the time to value that aspect of what God is trying to do in 2022. And then we put value on it. I want Wisdom is more valuable to me than rubies and silver and gold. It is something that I need. I want God to fill me with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And then saints, this is what God is, wants to do for us in 2022. It is something that God will release upon us. And even as... The winds blow and the seas begin to to roar. It's the wisdom of God that's going to help us to navigate through 2022. And to be able to make the decisions that align with the mind of God. And for all of us here, we want to make sure that this becomes our prayer. It becomes our new battle cry. It is something that we talk about and we discuss and that we examine. And that we're constantly saying, I want to make sure that don't try to push me down this road. I got to get some wisdom from God first. I want to make sure that God, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation leads and helps me to navigate through through this next year. Lord, we just thank you right now. Come on, worship team, come on up. We just give you praise and we give you glory. And Lord, I thank you that in this season you are releasing the spirit of wisdom and revelation over this house. We thank you that it is not foreign to us. It is something that we have talked about and we continue to talk about. We thank you that you are emphasizing that as we go into 2022. I pray in the name of Jesus, that you would dispel and displace and replace all false wisdom that has come upon your people, that has brought blindness, and that has brought confusion. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say to us, that we would access the mind of God, that we would access your wisdom, that you would speak to us from on high, and that wisdom would be something that would be um, readily available to all of us as we make decisions and navigate through this life. And Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus against every wisdom that is earthly. Lord, we rebuke the earthly wisdom. We bind the wisdom that is sensual And we rebuke the wisdom that is demonic. Peter thought that he was offering you, Lord, wisdom when he said to you, Far be it from you, Lord, you shall not die. Lord, we thank you that you had ears to hear what the Spirit was saying. And you said, Get behind me, Satan. You understood that voice. It was a foreign voice. God, help us to discern the voices. The voices on television and the voices on on YouTube and the voices on TikTok and the voices on Twitter and the voices and the voices that are coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. God, rebuke the voices and help us to hear what our shepherd is saying to us in this hour. And give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say to us. 
And the Lord would say, in this hour I am purifying even as I have perfected. I am establishing even as I have tested. And the Lord says that in this hour I will begin to release my wisdom and I will not do it in measure. The Lord says that I will open the floodgates in this hour and I will give you access to my mind. And the Lord said that I will silence the avenger and I will destroy that which has come against you. And the Lord says that I will establish and I will settle you. And the Lord says that in this hour, even as my, as my wisdom goes forth, the Lord says my wisdom is not going forth just for you. The Lord says my wisdom is going forth for me, that my word may be established in the land and my purpose will be accomplished in and through you and the Lord says that I will establish your way even as I am establishing my way in and through you the Lord says that in this hour my word will run swiftly man I just feel that my word will run swiftly the Lord says my word will run swiftly Lord, we just give you praise today. We give you glory for another year. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for your anointing. Use us for your glory, God. Pour out your wisdom. Just right where you are, just lift your hands and just begin to, to, to receive the wisdom of God. Everybody stand on your feet. There's such an anointing in this place. And God... Just like Paul prayed, Lord, I pray that you would give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we might know what is the hope of your calling. Lord, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Are y'all ready for next year, y'all? Are y'all ready for next year? Continue to pray that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Before we enter into this new year, we're going to start praising the Lord some more. We got five minutes. Can we praise the Lord all the end? Come on, Brother David, can we, pray, can we praise the Lord on this? Crystal, can we? Are you sure? Are y'all ready to give God some praise as we go in? Minister Antonio, God, get wisdom. Come on. Come on, let's bless the Lord right into Come on, the new girl. year.
Use you. 